Hello everybody, this is Sandra, it's Dave with Isabel and Curtis. Hello Isabel and hello Curtis. Hey, great to see you. Hi David. Today we have uh, lots of interesting things to pre prepare for you. So uh, let's start. I suppose we should start with a little bit of the updates. Um, Curtis usually starts. Sure, I can do just a quick couple of minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Bitcoin is holding up quite well, I think. Um, we've seen uh, in September, we saw the NASDAQ has sold off 11%. Uh, S&P 500 is off 9% and Bitcoin is flat. It hasn't fallen. So, I mean, very short time frame, just a month, uh, but it's um, very, very slightly decoupled on a very short term time frame. Well, uh, I would like to look back a little bit on our last mm -hmm. podcast that we three had. Uh, I believe it was in July. I think it was like two months ago and we had a call there. Each of us had a call and Isabel was right about a new bottom in the stocks this year. So mm -hmm. yes, the stocks are indeed uh, on the new bottom. Uh, they have made new bottom, both the Nasdaq, new yearly bottom, Nasdaq and S&P 500. And yes, as Curtis pointed out, crypto has not uh, fallen that much in September, although crypto always front runs uh, or OK, no, not front runs. But um, if there is more drop uh, in the stocks, then I am pretty sure the crypto uh, will make new yearly low as well. Um, and also that would uh, uh that would go along with my ascending wedge theory which still hasn't broken to fully break the ascending wedge that we were making in the summer we really indeed have to go to the new yearly low below 17.6k uh it hasn't happened yet um uh, i have a couple of indicators prepared for you long-term indicators uh so uh, we're gonna have a look at that as for the stocks alone um uh, what do you uh, guys think for the Q4? How do you see it? I'm long, t long term still still bearish, but for Q4, I have to admit I would not be too surprised if we should see some kind of bounce still again, because um, yeah, the sentiment is just very bearish, and um, the DXY has also reached a critical resistance and might um, come in a little bit. So that would be good short term for the risk on assets. But yeah, in the longer term, of course, um, I'm still bearish. But for Q4, I would not be too surprised if if we still see a little bit of a bounce. Would you like to follow, Curtis? Um, yeah, that se seems reasonable. Um since my last update things have gone much more negative um pretty shaky markets i mean we've had the, the below the double bottom you were right on that david and isabel that we've gone below the june low uh which i was thinking that would hold um and we've had some really scary headlines with uh well currencies moving really fast um i'll talk about that in a little bit um so there's a lot of shakiness now, I agree with Isabel, we may just get a reversion to the mean, so a bear market rally could uh, bounce us up in the fourth quarter. But overall, I have to admit that things are looking a lot worse than they were a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think the inflation being persistent is is the main reason why that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, until that goes away, it's hard to be extremely bullish. Yeah, um, I have uh, bl two blue lines uh, drawn. The second blue line is not for this year, absolutely no. And the second blue line, I might lift it up a bit as well uh, later. However, the first line, I thought it was not going to be hit this year, actually. The first line stands at 3,400. And given how, how bad the last weekly candle looks like, to be honest, when I see a candle like this, and this is only this is also a monthly candle, to be completely honest with you. Oh my gosh. Uh, this, <laughs> to be bad. honest, I think the first bad. line might actually get hit. But even if it does, uh, I will be in my red circle, I think, pretty soon. I 
I pretty much agree with you guys. And also Isabel was like speaking really well. like my mind kind of so again. So uh, yeah, Isabel is has improved like dramatically over. I know Isabel for like a year or something and she's improved dramatically over the past quarter or so. I think she's started being more technical and she somehow mm -hmm. technically, I think she has been reading the markets. Yeah, but don't start thinking too much about yourself, right? Because that's the one way how you start losing money and speaking from my own experience. But mm. for now, um, yeah, your call has your calls has been pretty, pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, well, let's I'm sure we're going to talk more about DXY. I know Curtis has prepared also some materials, uh, but just maybe a minute or two. Anybody? wants to say anything about so the yeah so we're at uh, go on monthly put the dxy on monthly mm -hmm. and you'll see uh if you go back to 2000 what 2001 um we haven't been we haven't been this high so i think it hit 122 in 2001 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we haven't been this high since then mm -hmm. so 20 21 years uh, DXY remains strong. Um, and 40 years, sorry to, sorry to distribute, 40 years ago, it was 165, just right. for the picture. Right. So uh, this week, the update was the, the Great British Pound crashed below parity, went to 105 or something, or uh, 95 or 96. Again, that's a 20 year low. So all the fiat currencies, uh, Japanese yen, euro, Great mm -hmm. British Pound, they're all getting slaughtered which is very scary, very disruptive mm -hmm. um, and very disturbing. Now, we're in a market now where actually extremely bad news could be good if governments step in and start uh, quantitative easing, right? It, markets could get so bad so quickly that uh, we might might get a pivot from the Fed. So in a sense, bad news is good news. If you look at it from a, uh, a monetary theory perspective, right? Um, and, but it's a crazy world because we would need a, a, a something to break or some extreme event that would be very bad for assets in the short term. And then, of course, hoping that um, uh, the U.S. government would pivot and uh, add liquidity. And then you might get that rally in Q4. But it's 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 ridiculous to hope for bad things uh, so that uh, assets could rise. Um, we've definitely had a very bad two weeks. We've had a bad three months. Um, now, what I'll talk about in a little bit is, is it just getting so extreme? So the DXY is way out of control. Yeah, well, I, I think also at some point the Fed will need to pivot. But the question is what a pivot means. Is it just like reducing the rate hikes? Um, I, f I personally think it's unlikely they might do quantitative, uh, quantitative e easing anytime soon again. Be because of the high inflation, that's um, yeah one of the tricky things about the current situation. Yeah, just uh, maybe uh, one sentence from me about the DXY. So this is my mm -hmm. fattest line. I made it the fattest, made it a couple mm -hmm. of months ago, I believe. The line means that this line is the, I still, uh, it's not still in a, in a macro bullish mode. It's still macro bearish. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, at least it's, it's not yet out of the control, but mm -hmm. uh, if we make a monthly open and a close above that line, then I would have to start seriously worrying. So uh, it hasn't happened yet. There is not going to be even a monthly open uh, above that line. So uh, fingers crossed. OK, so Isabel, would you like to start talking about your charts that you have prepared? I think um, it's a consideration to put it into perspective, you know, about the probability of returning to quantitative easing and easy monetary policy. And I think these are the interest um, rates, right? In a macro perspective, yeah, that's for probably 50, 60 like, years. We've been at the low for a while, like zero interest rates for like, well, with little ups and downs, of course. But I, th I think the cycle, it looks probable that we're not going to go so high, but that we're going to go higher than we've been in the last couple of years. And uh, and the quantitative easing, um, in my view, will be kind of unlikely. And um, let's let's have a look at um, the Hang Seng for a minute. 
Okay, what is Hang Seng, perhaps? Explain in oh, words. Yeah, that's the Chinese uh, stock index. Um, Chinese stock index is below mm. the blue line, which is 200 uh, weekly, right? This is yeah. the blue line is 200 weekly, which held off us support mm. multiple times. And now mm -hmm. it's breaking down. So that's true. Yeah, good observation. You're right. So, um, well, given the circumstances, I would not be too surprised, you know, if something similar might come up for the American stock market, like in the next 10 years or something like that. On the macro because, scale, in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because we've had this um, kind of vertical run up on the quantitative easing, on the low interest rates. And now it's really because of the inflation, I, I think it's kind of unlikely that we get those great conditions back. And it, it's, I mean, many other markets like this one and um, yeah, the Brazilian, they've been in this kind of sideways uh, consolidation for a long while. And um, yeah, it, it, it happens. So it, it's possible that we're gonna have a shift like those markets might maybe you can show the the other one the brazilian etf mm, okay etf one. this is s p 500 yeah exactly like you can see there's quite a big like a wedge pattern okay and... what are we looking at this is iShares. what what is okay this is the brazilian oh, the stock index brazilian etf yeah sorry the resolution is okay uh, well yeah. um okay. and um Maybe uh, maybe we'll have a kind of breakout in those emerging market indexes. Like, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if that happens. So um, what are you saying is that the third world, the countries that have been so far called of third world, like uh, South America, Africa, mm -hmm. maybe the East and Europe, maybe that all these are the future? Yeah, I think it's possible that this might um, happen for the next 10 years. It's just a mm -hmm. perspective to consider because mm -hmm. it's ebbs and tides and shifts and the American stock market has been running up a lot in the last 15 years. And now the conditions are not as perfect anymore. So it's something to consider. It's not like a prediction, mm -hmm. but it's something to consider. And of course it might have um and an impact on crypto as well that doesn't mean that crypto will do badly because at some point it will likely decouple and be viewed more like a digital gold actually like bitcoin and other cryptos but for the time being it definitely correlates with a risk on assets so it's it's something i mean it would also relate to your uh, thesis david like you said that crypto is kind of entering a new cycle like it something. already has it's not entering it already has it's just yet the influencers don't see it generally oh, but they will okay. Mm -hmm. uh okay um we uh okay i think we have to give a little bit space to, to curtis curtis would oh, you like yeah. to sure. go with your materials sure you can just pull up that that checklist I made. So mm -hmm. um, I've only got about 10 minutes here, but I just thought I, I mean, the big, um, what all investors want to know is um, how bad is this going to get? Are we going to have a, a, a Lehman crisis type event? Or are we going to have, um, you know, some sort of support? Um, headlines this week or last week, the Bank of England intervened in the gilt market. A gilt is a British bond. So like like a 10-year treasury so they intervened so the british government is raising rates and providing quantitative easing simultaneously if that makes sense so their policies are totally opposite this could be something that happens in the us um isabel you might be right that they don't cut rates but they may stop raising rates and there can be other ways that the us government can do quantitative easing quantitative they can start printing easing, money they can start printing well, money i mean so every time so Biden passed an infrastructure bill that was uh, that was uh, money into the economy. Uh, they forgave student loans. That's money to the, the mm. economy. So you can have the government spending while the Fed is tightening, if that yeah. makes sense. Right. Yeah. They're at odds with each other. Mm. Um, but I, I agree with your point that maybe they'll keep the, the, the Fed rate 
constant and not cut it. Um, so the Bank of England panicked this week. They basically, mm -hmm. UK pension funds were going to explode. They were uh, leverage called and the Bank of England came in and started buying gilts uh, to stabilize the market. Um, the Bank of Japan also intervened within the last 10 days to prop up the yen. Um, CNBC headline is saying the Fed is breaking things. Uh, Morgan Stanley is saying the US dollar strength ha ha is leading to some sort of financial or economic crisis. So you're seeing the headlines change to full panic. Um, people saying the Fed may need to stabilize the price of treasuries um and emergency funding so very quickly i would say in 10 days suddenly we're in panic mode with headlines uh remember that all the governments talk to each other oh, they make that so um powell will call christine lagarde uh kishida san from japan will call uh biden they're all talking it's a global economy and the the balance of trade is triggered by currency changes okay and so if the us dollar stays too strong this is not sustainable. Um, if you look at the bottom, I'm saying the US dollar becomes a wrecking ball, right? So the DXY is at 112, 113. It's the highest it's been in, in 30 years. Um, Euro, Great British Pound and Japanese Yen are in free fall. They're at 20 year lows. Basically the US dollar is getting too strong and it's gonna start breaking things very, very soon. Like before the end of the year, it looks like. And so is that is that good news or bad news? We don't know, right? If things get so bad and you have a major bank default in Italy or you have a pension fund crash, you're going to have the the global governments, they're going to have to jump in. A big thing we're not hearing about is, is baby boomers in the US. They hold like at least half of all wealth is in pension funds and in retirement savings accounts, which are basically stocks, okay? If those start to crash, you're going to have massive political pressure from Congress to say to the Fed, you're crashing our economy and we just can't have it anymore. So um, once the politicians get involved, you may see some reversion of basically government spending uh, or government intervention. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say there other than um, I think if you drop down, um, sorry, if, if you go back to my chart just one more time. Oh, okay. Dave, yeah. Oh, there's supposed to be an arrow there, but um, so you can see, I see intervention, intervention, intervention. We've already had Japan and and uh, the Bank of England intervene in 10 days. I think that's a sign of things to come, uh, but we may have massive crashes before then. What what does it mean for something to break? Yeah, you're talking about like an Italian bank defaulting or a major pension fund defaulting. That's what we'd look for. Um in the next couple months, if that happens, I think that's where governments get involved again. A lot of people hold their money in great British pounds and a lot of people hold their money in Euro. All three of these have been massive losses, okay? And so what does that mean? If uh, people see something like Bitcoin or gold becoming more appealing as a non-US dollar way to hold, uh, cash equivalents we call that maybe gold and bitcoin a cash equivalent you may see a bid towards those of course I'm a, I'm a bitcoiner so i'm biased but it could be that people start parking money uh into something other than the yen the euro and the pound they basically their brands have been i think permanently damaged and you have 40 trillion dollars in the world saying we want to hold cash or cash equivalent so just something to think about um well, if we go to the Euro USD chart, I would like to point out or add yeah. that uh, um, it's not, uh, in my mind at least, I don't think it's uh, it's permanently damaged, at least not yet. It's actually bullish. Uh, it's still it's still strong. Although, again, it comes all down. Since when? On what on time the frame? In a time frame of uh, 60 years. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you have okay. a 60 year time yeah, frame. Yeah, this I'll is a bad year. You. This is a bad yeah. year, I agree, but uh, uh, yeah. I'm talking about a very like a macro scale. Okay, but, but that's a yeah, okay. It's a long uh, time frame. It is a long time frame, but even that comes down to my fat line in my mind at least. So, okay. it was pretty scary. I was watching this day by day last week. And I was really like, "Oh my god, are we really going to close monthly above it?" But fortunately, we didn't. Yeah. 
So let's see uh, if my observation comes true, if I'm correct, then the next year is going to be finally red candle on DXY. On monthly. So, uh, so over what time frame? On monthly, then the next monthly candle, if my observation is correct, the next monthly candle mm. on DXY will be red. Okay, and what is your prediction of that impacting stocks and uh, Bitcoin? Well, what do we know about? Yeah, well, it's an inverse relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously, then the S and P will have the next the in in October. I mean, this month. Sorry, we are already in October. Okay, so I meant October. Uh, obviously, for stocks, they will be back at least to my red circle, at least there. So thirty seven, thirty eight hundred, thirty seven hundred. Right. At the end of October, that would be if my observation uh, is correct. Yeah, if the DXY okay. tops, that has that's definitely a, a uh, good uh, news for it's a tailwind assets. for for assets. Yeah. And uh, and we have had such a big move the other way that you would see a reversion to the mean, perhaps at least in currencies, for example, or um, uh, it could be stocks continue to sell off, but it's definitely a support there. I would just go back to Isabel's chart on the historical Fed rate. I, I'd like to just make one little other point there, the one that had it, so, yeah, that one. So mm -hmm. look at the last, look at the last ten years since two thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at the time frames. What happened when they raised rates from two thousand five to two thousand eight? What happened? We had a crash, right? Uh, we had the yeah. it basically triggered the Lehman catastrophe, right? And then look in 2018, when they started raising rates, what happened again? They had to cut back down to zero, right? So the 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 magnetic pull is towards the zero. <laughs> now, mm. and now they've so now they've raised rates, and guess what's happening? Uh JBP crashing, or sorry, GBP, uh Japanese yen intervention, stocks crashing. So it could be that they aren't able to raise much higher. Um they've tried mm -hmm. famously in 2018 they tried to raise rates and they 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 uh they pivoted back very quickly so uh mm -hmm. let's see let's see remember that uh global debt if you put global debt in this chart it would be like that right and you look at m2 it's also very high so um times have changed since 1980 um all i think of these three, all of these three combined does look like the system is slowly but surely breaking. So I know this chart, I agree with you, Isabel, that it does look like it should have, if this is a classical chart, I would say 10% in the next 10 years. But uh, if the system is somehow breaking yeah. or, you know, then uh, these rules will not necessarily apply. Yeah, that that's the question how much, like, I mean, the difference to the last, um, Two decades, of course, is that we are not below 2% inflation. But on the other hand, we all know that interest rates cannot be raised too high because of the global debt. So we couldn't have sustainable interest rates at 5%. That would totally break the system. So it, I think it will be higher than zero. Yeah, but lower. I would probably agree to that as well. So Isabel, you think 5% is the limit on the top? Maybe in the short term, it can actually go a little bit higher, but I personally would think that it's probably not going to go higher. The problem is the Fed should actually wait to see the effects of the raised rates because it's kind of problematic if they raise too fast without waiting because it's kind of, you know, it takes some time to show effect. And if they do it too fast, they, as, as you also say, they can easily break something. So I, right. I hope they will be careful. And um, I think they could do could do well with staying below 5%. And yeah. in the longer term, somewhere around maybe three, four, I don't know. Right. And, uh, yeah, well, that's also problem. interesting. So yeah, if we let's say we, we don't know, but let's say 5% is kind of the, the top and higher than that, they absolutely blow up the system. But remember that stocks have, are the, investors have already priced around four so four has been priced in and five is impossible so you can see where we're kind of topping in some extent also the unemployment right now it's it looks um not 
like people would think, oh, un employment is great. We have very low unemployment, but there is many bigger companies that are starting to lay off. And it's, of course, a lagging indicator. So, um, yeah, yeah, it might be seen a little later, unfortunately. Might be seen the next year. The next mm -hmm. year, well, we'll talk about the next year the next time. It's too early um, to talk about it, but we are running out of time for this podcast, I'm afraid. I also wanted to share, however, before we end, uh, the indicator that I have prepared. I'm sure you know it, um, MVRV ratio. This mm -hmm. is a very macro indicator that is worth to look at every now and then. It's uh, so for the viewers to, to, uh, to explain what this actually is. So uh, it's the uh, market value slash the uh, realized value or market cap slash realized cap. What is realized cap? So it's uh, the cap of the coins that have moved in a certain period of time. What this shows uh, uh, what, or the point of in, in this chart is that there is not like 20, there is not, there is never going to be 21 billion uh, million bitcoins in circulations because so many uh, bitcoins have been lost already even millions of them uh, mainly at the beginning of the uh, of the network because the uh, bitcoin had at first no value just a community value and then it has a very little value so people didn't pay attention to their bitcoins mm -hmm. and lost it so this ratio uh, uh what it should show or what it usually means that if we, if it is below one it's that the investors are generally sitting on losses and it is below one yes i think this is a different cycle but i think this chart is still going to be somewhat uh respected so what does that mean for the bitcoin price lower well lower than we are now again um, so some are mid mid teens maybe 10, uh, 10 to fifteen thousand. Yes, would be the yes, mathematical yes, yes, 10 yes, to exactly 000. exactly right, that would be that right. it's uh -huh. just nice to see that um correlation like oh wow well, yeah broad money supply and uh, the bitcoin price so very interesting good, very good chart yeah. that's the deviation from trend. this one right yeah mm -hmm. that's interesting mm -hmm. yeah absolutely you can see that correlation Raises the question, um, yeah, how how broad money supply, uh, the growth of that, and how it will affect the Bitcoin price in the future. Right, and uh, we could see from uh, what uh, David showed, it uh, M two hasn't actually fallen; it's flattened. And then mm -hmm. you'd say, well, if you're going to flip a coin, or sorry, if you're going to make a bet, is it going to go higher or lower? What's the bet you're going to make, and that impacts maybe a prediction on crypto, right? So yeah. I would bet. I would bet uh, it's going to flat, maybe stay flat, and then go up. Of uh, course, uh, not of course. Let's no, let's mm -hmm. never yeah. pretend that something is yeah. forgiven. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's bullish, and that might take two years. Maybe that takes two years. Maybe we are in a bear market for a while longer with crypto. But uh, if you're going to bet uh, one way or the other, I would bet that M2 supply is going to increase. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I actually uh, join you in that um, in that stance because I think if you look further out in the next two to three years, I'm definitely also bullish on crypto as well. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just just thinking, we have some more downside before that. Could be. Yeah, we'll see. Well, okay, we have one last minute, so I'm afraid we have to wrap this up. Um, so, uh, Isabel, how did you like our podcast? Do you want to attend the next time again? Yeah, sure. Sounds I think you've brought lots of value. I think the Harv is going to love, you know, not just him, but viewers in general are going to love this. So, um, Curtis, uh, what do you think? Um, do we switch back to like two weekly periods or how do you feel? Uh, two, two per month is probably about right. Two per month. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah, it's about right. 